Hey guys, here's a quick look at how easy it is to create a 2 of 3 multisig vault using two passports, a seed signer, and blue wallet on my Android phone, although the steps are identical for iOS as well. So to get started on blue wallet, I'm going to tap add now, choose vault, and then give my vault a name. And then I'm going to tap create. And as we can see, the default vault is a two of three, where we're going to use three keys to construct the wallet, and two of them are required to construct any spends, but you can alter that here. Okay, so let's import our first key. So I'm going to tap import, scan or import file, which will open my phone's camera, and then over on my first passport, I'm going to head down to manage account, Connect Wallet, Blue Wallet, Multisig, QR Code. Passport will then show me a series of animated QR codes that Blue Wallet wants to scan. Key number one, imported. Let's do the same for our second passport. So on Blue, I'm going to tap Import, Scan, and then over on the passport, down to manage account, connect wallet, blue wallet, multi-sig, QR code. And once again, just scan the QR codes my passport is displaying. There we go. We already have two of our three keys added. So finally, let's do the seed signer. So on blue, it's import, scan. And then on seed signer, with our seed already imported to the device, I'm going to click on seeds, choose the seed, scroll down to export xpub, multi-sig, native segwit, and blue wallet. Seed signer will show me the details that it's about to export. Then it will show me that in QR code format to be read by blue wallet. Okay, so we have our three keys imported, and then we just tap Create. So our 2 or 3 multisig vault is now being built. The next step is to import the multisig configuration file onto all of our devices, and this will enable each device to securely verify receive and change addresses when taking part in transactions. So to do that, we're just going to open the vault in Blue Wallet, tap the three dots, Scroll down and tap on Export Coordination Setup. And that will show me the multisig vault configuration information that each of my devices now wants to scan. So let's do that with the first passport. So if I move forward to the next screen, the camera will open and I just need to scan the QR codes that Blue is displaying. Passport will then read back to me all of the information contained within the multisig configuration file and then save it to the device. Let's repeat that for passport number two. Okay, and to finish off the two passport setups, as you can see on the device, it wants to check that the wallet connected correctly. And what it's gonna do here is verify a receive address. So I'm gonna X out of the coordination setup on blue, go back into the wallet, and tap receive. And then with each of my passports, I'm just going to move forward to the next screen and scan the receiving address that Blue Wallet is displaying. And then we're looking for a blue verified message and a text version of the address that should be a carbon copy of the one that you see in Blue Wallet. Connection is now complete for passport number one. So let's just repeat that step for passport number two. Scan that QR code and then we have the verified message. Next, we'll carry out the similar steps over on the seed signer. So I'm going to back out of the QR code. And so I'm going to back out of the QR code. And you can see now the seed signer wants me to import the multi-sig configuration file so that it's able to verify this address. 
So on Blue Wallet, I'm going to head back into the settings, tap Export Coordination Setup. On the seed signer, I'm going to choose Scan Descriptor, which will open the camera, and then I can scan the QR codes that Blue Wallet is displaying. So the descriptor is now loaded into the device, and you can see each device's fingerprint there. And all I need to do is tap on Verify Address. And we have an address verified success message. Okay, so we've added all three devices, set up our two of three vault, and imported the multi-sig configuration file to each device. It's worth mentioning here that, of course, the CTANA, due to its stateless nature, will not save this information between device power cycles. So now that we're all set up, I'm going to go ahead and send some Bitcoin into this vault, and then we can look at how easy it is to spend from it. Okay guys, a small amount of time has now passed and I have sent a small amount of Bitcoin into this demonstration 2 or 3 multisig vault. So let's look at how easy it is to send those funds back out. For this demonstration purpose, I'm going to sign the transaction with one passport and the seed signer. So let's go ahead and construct the spend transaction in Blue Wallet first. So I'm going to tap on send, paste or scan the address that I want to send to. I can optionally add a note for the transaction. Then I can type the amount of Bitcoin that I would like to send. For this demonstration, I'm going to send the entire balance. And then I can tap on the fee to choose my fee rate. Once I'm ready, I can tap next. And as you can see, Blue Wallet is now asking for two signatures to authorize this transaction. So first off, let's do that with the passport. So I'm going to tap provide signature. And Blue Wallet is now showing an animated QR code, which represents the unsigned version of this transaction. So over on my passport, I'm going to log in, click on sign with QR code, and then scan the QR codes being displayed by Blue Wallet. Once Passport's read all the information, it's going to relay the transaction information back to me on screen. So I'm going to see the destination address and the send amount, the change address, if any, the network fee, and then I'll be asked if I want to sign the transaction. After that, Passport will then show me its own series of animated QR codes, which represents the signed version of this transaction. So to pass that back across the blue wallet, all I need to do is tap scan or import file and then hold my passport up to my phone's camera. Simple as that, we now have one signature of the two required. So next, let's tap on provide signature under vault key number two. Blue wallet will show me the same animated QR code series ready for signing with the seed signer. So on the seed signer, I'm just going to click on scan and then scan the QR codes that Blue Wallet is displaying. And just like Passport, CTANA will relay all of the transactional information back to me on its screen. Once I've read through all that information, I'll be asked if I want to approve the transaction. Once I've done that, Seed Signer will show me another animated QR code series, which represents the signed version of the transaction. So just like I did with Passport, over on Blue, I'm going to tap on Scan, and then hold my Seed Signer in front of my phone's camera. And there we go, we have the two required signatures, and the transaction is now ready to be broadcast. To do that, I tap on Confirm, and then send now. And our transaction has now been broadcast and is awaiting confirmation by the network. Okay, so I just wanted to mention a quick note about backups with your multi-sig vault. So this video assumes that you already have set up your three devices and you have the corresponding seed word backups. But another important piece of information when constructing multisig wallets is the multisig configuration file, also referred to sometimes as the descriptor. It's important that you keep a copy of this descriptor or configuration file with each of your seed word backups. 
this will give you some protection against a kind of doomsday scenario where you lose access to a passport or the seed signer and its corresponding seed word backup to be able to reconstruct the multisig wallet and be able to spend with the remaining two keys you need at least one copy of that multisig configuration file or descriptor so as we've mentioned earlier in the video, each of your passport devices will hold a copy of the multisig configuration file. And if you head to settings, Bitcoin, multisig, and then choose the multisig file, you'll see that you can now export that via QR code or micro SD card for some offline storage. You can also save an offline copy of the multisig configuration file from Blue Wallet. So let's look at how we can do that. Tap the three dots. Scroll down to Export Coordination Setup. You'll then see the multisig configuration file. If you then tap on Share, Blue Wallet will allow you to save this as a file onto your phone. So in this example, it's saved demovault.txt into my downloads folder. So let's have a look at what that looks like. There we go, we have a text file that contains all of the information required to reconstitute this wallet into another version of the Blue Wallet app. I am aware that Sparrow Wallet will also allow you to import this Blue Wallet backup file if you want to reconstitute view access to this vault within the Sparrow application. So now that you've got this file saved onto your phone, it would be a good idea to copy it to a USB drive or an SD card and keep one copy of this file on a storage medium with each of your seed word backups.